Now first, let's introduce you to the basic setup of our editing suite. We have a VTR player, which can be viewed through its own player monitor. And we have a VTR recorder, which can be viewed through its own recorder monitor. The two VTR machines are operated by a VTR editing control unit. Over here, we have a title maker, which can be viewed through the player monitor. Don't worry about the title maker right now. We will discuss that in our second segment later on in this show. What you need to do first is to turn on both of the monitors. and turn on the VTR player. When you turn on the VTR player, one half of the editing control unit is automatically turned on, like the little red numbers here. This half controls only the VTR player. After that, insert your source tape, which contains your roughly shot footage. Push the tape all the way in until the VCR pulls it in for you. Next, turn on the VTR recorder. When the VTR recorder is turned on, the other half of the editing control unit is automatically turned on. This other half controls only the VTR recorder. But since both the VTR player and recorder is turned on, the editing control unit can control both the VTR recorder and player. Once that is done, insert your destination tape which you will be recording on. This editing matching allows you to edit your footage by the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Editing by the frames is useful when you want to edit a footage with sharp precision. It should be noted, however, that there are 30 frames for each second. To be able to view your tapes on both monitors, look at the editing control unit and press both of the search buttons for the player VTR and the recorder VTR. On the left side of the editing control unit, there is a shuttle dial which controls the fast forward and reverse of the player VTR. What you need to do now is to use the dial to search your source tape for the beginning of a scene that you want to record from. If you want the fast forward or reverse to go very quickly, then turn the dial all the way around to the direction you want to go. But if you want the fast forward or reverse to go very slowly, then turn the dial a tiny bit around to the direction you want to go. To stop the VTR from fast forward or reverse, turn the dial to the center position. You will know if you are in the center when you feel the dial lock as you turn it. When you turn the dial to its locked position, the VTR is on pause mode. 
On the right side of the editing control unit, there is a dial which controls the fast forward and reverse for the recorder VTR. Now you need to search your destination tape for the part of your tape where you want to start recording on, such as after the last recorded scene. Usually, you should edit your show with the video insert and both of the audio channel 1 and channel 2 buttons pressed down. So, you can make clean edits on your black bursted tape. The only time you should edit with the assemble button is when you record a black burst or recording on a broken track. Next, set your entry endpoints for both the player and the recorder. To do this, press Player Entry and Player In. Press down both of the buttons at the same time. Afterwards, press Recorder Entry and Recorder In both at the same time. When the entry in points are set, Use the VTR player dial to fast forward your source tape to where you want the recording to end. Now, set your entry out point for the player. To do this, press player entry and player out together. Press the preview button. As the preview function is occurring, watch the recorder monitor on the right. The editing system will simulate what will happen if the recording did occur. So it's not recording anything yet, it's just simulating it. That gives you an opportunity to see if you can find any mistakes in the preview, such as checking if the edit timing is off, or if the sound is a little too low. If the sound is a little too low, turn up the recording levels a bit on the VTR recorder. But if the sound is a little too loud, or if you hear sound distortion, turn down the recording levels a bit. You can try watching only the recording levels during the preview operation to see if the sound is balanced. When the preview looks alright to you, press the auto edit button in order to record your scene. The tapes on both VTRs will rewind 5 seconds of tape and both will go forward for 5 seconds before the recording begins. Don't worry, this helps the machines to prepare itself for a synchronized recording. The editing system will record the amount of footage only from the in points and from the out points that you set in yourself. Once the recording is done, press the review button to see whether the recording was successful or not. If you want to only record a visual over an already recorded scene without erasing the sound, press the video insert button and repeat the step-by-step -step process again. And, if you want to only record the sound over an already recorded scene without erasing the visual, press the audio channel 1 and channel 2 and repeat the step-by-step -step process again. The Audio Channel 1 and Channel 2 system lets you edit on two 
separate soundtracks. If, for example, you want to record a music from the VTR player to the VTR recorder without erasing the visual and the voice from the original recording, simply record the music on one of the channels. For example, channel 1. The sounds from the original recording is usually recorded on to both of the channels. So if you were to record music or a sound effect onto channel 1, the voice on channel 2 will still be intact. In fact, when you're finished recording, you can hear both the voice and music on both channels at the same time. Thus, the sounds are mixed together and you can still go back and change the sounds on channel 1 and or channel 2 again if you wish. But remember to preview your recording and check your sound levels. Adjust your audio recording levels so that one audio channel is not louder than the other. Try to keep the levels as equal as possible. The title maker operates almost the same way as typing on a computer. To turn on the title maker, you must press the power button. Next, you press this button on the VTR player monitor so you can see what you are typing. You should be able to see this on your monitor. This icon indicates what project you're on. A project is a collection of pages. This icon tells you what page you're on. This one tells you what effect will be used to start a page. This one tells you how long the word will be on the screen. And this one will tell you what effect will be used to end a page. The blinking line that is shaped like a skinny letter I is called a cursor. So let's use an example. Let's say you want to type in the words CUTV. Now you want to record this on to the VTR recorder. First you look for this switch on the VTR recorder. If you were to flip the switch from the dub position to the line position, you will be able to record from the title maker to the VTR recorder. To let the editing machine record from the title maker, you must have the VTR player turned on and have a tape in it. The reason for this is not to record anything from the VTR player, but is to make the editing system be able to record. Next, turn the VTR recorder shuttle dial on the editing control unit to find the part of the tape that you want to start recording onto. Once it is done, press player entry and player in together. 
and press recorder entry and recorder in together. Press the video insert button. Turn the recorder dial to find where you want the recording to end. Then press recorder entry and recorder out together. Now press the preview button. In order to record your title, wait until the editing system sets itself to record by letting it rewind 5 seconds and go forward for 5 seconds. After it goes forward for 5 seconds, the recording will start. Now you press the play button to make the title appear on the VTR recorder screen. Now you know that the title is being recorded. If you press the play button again, the title will disappear. The editing system will not record anything from the title maker until you press the play button. If the preview looks alright to you, press the OK button on the title maker to return yourself to the work screen and press the auto edit button. When the recording starts, press play. Press play again to make your title disappear before the recording finishes. Let's look at the other functions of the title maker. To type another word underneath the first, press the OK button. Now you can type in another word, like Concordia. If you want to make a second page to write on, press New Page and type another word. If you want to make a third page, press New Page again and type another word. Now use the arrow pad to move the cursor to the first page and press play. Each and every time you press play, it shows you one page at a time what you have just typed. So, if you press play once, it shows you page 1. If you press play again, it shows you page 2, and so on. But if you keep pressing play, and you get a blank screen in front of you, it means that you've already played each and every one of your pages. To return back to our work screen, press OK. To get rid of some of your words, press the delete button to erase each letter. If you like to change the design of your letters, look at the font section of the title maker and press the button that says font. 
To select a letter design, which is called a font, simply press the up and down arrows of the arrow pad. Once you have selected the font, press the OK button. As you can see, only the word CUTV has changed and not the word Concordia. That is because any changes you make will only affect the word that occupies the same line as the cursor. So whatever line you move the cursor up or down, that is where the change will occur. Now let's say you like this kind of font for your word, but you don't like the shape of it. Press the font button again. In this option menu, you should see a thin horizontal blue line near the top of the screen. On each of the very ends of the blue line, there are two icons which represent the two buttons on your keyboard. They are called Mark Start and Mark End. By pressing one of the two buttons, they allow you to select the different options of this menu from either side of the blue line. The area of the one side of the blue line that is colored black is the area that you are currently using. But the other area that is colored gray is the area that is not being used. If you want to operate the other option of this menu, select the Mark Start or Mark End button and you will move to the upper part of the blue line. Select the font size by pressing the left or right arrow. Every size you select will completely change all the fonts. Once you have selected a size, press the OK button. Now, the word CUTV is bigger. Let's try a problem. Let us say that you have two words that don't fit the screen and that one of the letters have been cut off the screen. To solve this problem, press the style button. Now, in this option, you can make the letters slightly close together or slightly apart. Use the arrow pad to select the words that are the closest together to each other and press the OK button. Now the words Concordia and Mike are squeezed together. Not so much so that you can see the difference in letter spacing, but so that the words are no longer cut off. If you want to make the letters thicker, press the style button. Now press the mark start or mark end button so you will choose the option at the bottom of the screen. Use the arrow pad to move the cursor down to the words with the thickest letters. Now press OK. It is apparent that the thicker words are trimmed a bit, which doesn't make it look nice. So press the style button from the font menu and press mark start or mark end to select the option in the middle of this menu. Select the words that have letters further away from each other and 
press OK. Use the delete button to erase the extra E on the word mic. Now that the line looks much better, let's try to add some color to it. Press the button that says color under the word letter. You can see many varieties of colors to choose from. Move up or down to select what color you want and press OK. Now the two words are colored blue. If you want to put some style into your color, press the pattern button. Here you can choose four different styles. By using the arrow pad to move the black line over each of the four boxes, you can choose solid colors, colors with patterns, The option underneath the blue line lets you customize your selection. This is the same for rainbow colors. This style lets you superimpose a video signal from your source tape from the VTR player. But for now, let's go back to the solid color style. Now let's put an outline onto CUTV. Press color underneath the word outline and select what color you like. Press OK. Now CUTV has a bit of depth. To change the style of the outline, press the pattern button under the word outline. Again, you can choose the different styles. Solid colors, patterns, rainbows, or superimposed video. With this title maker, you can add borders as well as letters. Press the color button underneath the word border and select your color. Now press Style and select the style of border you want. As you can see above the blue line, you can select the different styles for your borders. Press OK. Now you have your border. Now let's change the color of the background. Press the color button underneath the word background and select your color. Now if you want to change the style, press the pattern button underneath the word background. Again, you can select the solid colors or patterns or rainbows or the superimposed video signal. You also have the option of fading from color to video. Press Mark Start or Mark End and use the arrow pad to fade 
from left to right. You can even leave the fade in the middle. And get yourself a yellow and greenish scenery. But now let's fade back to a solid color and make the background black again. So move the cursor to the left so that the color is solid. Press Mark Start or Mark End. Press Color and find the black. Now press OK. Let's try some interesting effects in making your words come into frame and out of frame. Press the IN button under the word Effects. Each one of the 24 boxes represents a different way that your words can come into frame. Use the arrow pad to select which one you like. Hmm, let's try making the words go up. Now press the OUT button. This menu looks almost the same as the Effects In menu. So select any of the boxes as you did on the Effects In menu. So let's try to make the words go down after. Press OK to return to the work screen. As you can see, this icon has changed, telling you that the page is going to enter the screen by rising up. And this icon tells you that the page is going to leave the screen by going down. Now press play. When you press play once, the words are rising up the screen. But when you press play the second time, it sinks down until it disappears. Now let's try changing the speed of the entrance and the exits of the words. Press the IN button under the word Effects. Now press the Mark Start or Mark End buttons until you get in between the blue lines. Over here you have some numbers with the picture of a turtle on the left end and the picture of a rabbit on the right end. This option controls how fast or slow you like the words to enter the screen. So let's move the cursor to the left to make the page enter the screen very slowly. Now press the OUT button underneath the effects button. Go to the speed bar and Move the cursor to the rabbit on the right to make the words leave the screen very quickly. Press OK. Now press play. You can see that it is doing the same thing as before, only that it is going slower. When you press play again, it sinks away quickly. Now instead of having to press play again 
and again after the first time. Why not put your work on a timer? Press the IN button again. Press the MARK START or MARK END button to move down to the bottom of the screen. This icon you're on now simply allows you to press the play button for every single page. But if you want the title maker to do the job for you, move the cursor to the left, where the picture of the clock is located. If you want the words to stay on the screen for two seconds, press the number 2, and press the number 0 to move the number 2 to where the seconds are located. Press OK. Now, when you press play, the words will rise up. Then, it will wait for two seconds, and then make the words sink down by themselves. Press the IN button. The two icons on the very right can make all of your words fly across the screen or rise up. For example, if you were to choose this icon, uh, 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 hang on here, let me just adjust the speed bar again so that the playback won't be take too long. Okay, um, sorry, a a as I was saying. If you were to choose this icon, your words would move across the screen like a warning banner. But, if you were to choose this icon, it will make your words crawl up the screen like the ending credits of a television show. Similar to the ending credits you're going to see when this show ends. If you want to learn some more about this title maker, please consult the owner's manual, which can be found on the editing table. If you have any problems with using the editing system or the title maker, ask any one of the CUTV members who may happen to pass by. So good luck and happy editing!